From the Zoomerplex in historic Liberty Village, The Zoomer with Marissa Lennox. Welcome to The Zoomer, I'm Marissa Lennox. Let's talk about retirement, shall we? Are you ready for it or do you feel like it's slipping away? See, the once reliable model of slogging away for four decades and retiring at 65 is no longer a given. A slew of factors are upending that notion, including longer life expectancies, rising living costs, and a shift in our attitudes toward work. Some are even questioning whether retirement is on its way out altogether. But whether you're still punching the clock or you're already enjoying your time off, there is an art to mastering wealth and securing a comfortable retirement. See, it's no secret it can be expensive. And according to a new BMO survey, many Canadians now believe they need to save up $1.7 million to retire comfortably, a 20% increase from just three years ago. Meanwhile, only 44% feel confident that they'll have enough saved up for when that time actually comes. So what does this mean for the average Canadian and how can you ensure that you're prepared for whatever the future holds? For this, we turn to our panel, and it is very good to have you all here for what will be a great discussion, I am sure. And Bill, I'll begin with you, because if you look at labor force participation and you break it down by demographic, what you'll find is that an increasing number of Zoomers are choosing to work past 65, and yes, in part because they want to, but also because they have to. How true is that for CARP members? Well, that certainly is uh, true. In fact, the old-fashioned concept of retiring at 65 is going out of style. At CARP, for, in fact, we prefer to think as, as a time to refocus but not retire. Retirement was just is an imaginary creation of uh, Bismarck uh, decades ago in Germany who wanted to get rid of some generals. There's no real basis, financial or age-wise, to say that 65 is the right age. And now people are living longer. Our health care is better instead of the problems. We're adding a decade to our lives every 10 years. And that means that people want to refocus, do new things perhaps, but retiring, doing nothing, isn't in the cards for people who are still healthy and happy about life. Monica, when we talk about the changing face of retirement, we can't ignore the fact that so many of them are women and many of whom are not prepared, have maybe in so many ways never thought about money in their life and are now looking at retirement planning and really don't even know where to start. So you're really directing that at me, aren't you? I asked the question to I, yes, you. Yes, you did. So, yeah, I, I mean, I would say that only recently I realized I couldn't just lean in. I had to dive in and change, change my ways. Um, I'm an artist, a writer, and an actress, and an author, and so I have lived a freelance life. And in a freelance life, there's no guarantees, and that was perfect for me. I loved it. My husband is the same. When I was quite young, quite young, I went bankrupt, which was the most humiliating experience of my entire life, and I'm so grateful that that happened to me, because I don't know anybody a dime. I am really, really, I, I mean, I may not always earn a lot of money, but I'm really so much, I, I'm so much better with money because I, I, I didn't ever want to feel that way again. It's awful. And I have no intention of ever retiring because I love what I do. Robert, I want to ask you, because there's a perception that people feel they need $1.7 million to retire. And that's a study that came from BMO. Is that accurate? Is it inflated? Is it not enough? Uh, whenever you hear that $1.7 million number, it's really how people are thinking. And it's really what has happened over the last year, where you hear people going to the grocery store and instead of spending $100 on groceries, they're now spending $200 right. on groceries, going to the gas pump. Inflation is inflating people's expectations mm -hmm. about how much money they do need to live uh, a retirement in which they expect. So that's their perception, but is that reality? Uh, unfortunately, it is moving in that direction. They're one and the same. They're one and the same because inflation is causing costs to go up and it is resulting in the actual number you need to re retire to be higher. Everyone is individual and everyone is unique in their, their needs based on where they live around the country and their spending expectations, but the number is going higher. So if you were to break that down, what would that mean per year? What do you tell your clients? Oh gosh, um, well we tell our clients to really have a look at their current spending and then to think through how they want to make decisions in retirement. So we go through an, a deep discovery process where we start to understand what we talk about are the four pillars of the new retirement. So we say, okay, health is really important. We know that. We know family is important. 
we know purpose is important, and we know finances are important. So those are the four pillars of the new retirement. What does that mean to you in terms of how you're going to choose what lifestyle you lead and how you're going to um, plan for that and mm -hmm. make sure that you have enough money? So it is so individual that it really depends, you know, where someone lives has is a factor, right? If yeah. are you urban Toronto, are you, you know, rural um, Saskatchewan? I mean, it, it really varies. So, so we spend time understanding how our clients like to live, what their behaviors are, and how those behaviors are likely to continue or shift through retirement. So uh, a lot of the people that I speak with sit between sort of mid thirties to mid fifties. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's that sandwich generation. The parents are getting older. They may or may not have kids. They may or may not have property. A surprise, like a lot of my friends and a lot of people that I know still rent because trying to buy a property in Toronto because they work here, they have family here, they grew up here is just absolutely ridiculous. And it's also that generation that was also told that you need a house to start building that wealth ladder. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that house, you can't start building that wealth ladder. How are you gonna get that $1.7 million down That's the true. line? So can I ask a question? I mean, 1.7 million is the figure one needs. And maybe there's a thin line of people who have that. And then there's everybody else. So how does that translate to, to normal human beings? How are they going to handle retirement? I don't think they can retire. That's what I really think. I think people are going to keep on working and keep on working. But I'd love to hear if anybody has any All right, idea. we'll hold that thought, Monica, because we'll get into it in the next segment. So don't go away. When we come back, we'll dive into some practical advice to help you navigate retirement planning. That's next.